Hey guys, Bob here. As you saw, uh, we got the Imperial uh, headed in the right direction, going to the shop, <laughs> into the shop finally. Uh, the bay in the shop has been full, and uh, I had to clean it out, I had to get a car out, I had to clean it out. It took all day, just about, well, maybe half a day yesterday, and half, pretty much all this morning. It's 11.30. So uh, we did fire it up, and it fired right up pretty easy. It's been sitting for a month, I guess. And uh, it's a little chilly today, but uh, fired up, ran, it seemed to run okay. And uh, we're gonna put it in the shop and uh, we got some things we gotta do to it before we take it to the track. It is starting to get pretty cool and I don't want to uh, get out there racing it on a day. Actually, it'll be test and tune. I'll probably take easy passes when I first go out. I don't know where I'm gonna go. We just have to look at the tracks and what schedules they got. But I wanna let you guys know that we are about to pull this car in the shop finally and uh, i'll show you what we got to do to it okay okay guys so on the imperial some things has got to be fixed you know i'm a touch-up guy i noticed we have a little chip right here and it's starting to get a little rust and i did he did give me a little bit of paint and the grill header lots of pits in the bumper it's pretty bad it's peeling up I have to send the bumper and the grill header off to be re -chromed. Fortunately, I have a spare. I have a parts car. Uh, I need to plug this hole here. Just no particular reason. Just, I just don't like that. Wouldn't hurt to take this off and polish it or have it anodized. I can get another mirror from the parts car. That won't be a problem. The mirror, the inside rear view mirror, I, can, I need to reattach that. This weather stripping here is no longer available. Nobody's repopping it. I've already looked. I've looked, asked questions on some of the popular sites. Nothing. The parts car has one. It's cracked in a few places, nowhere near as bad as this, so it'll go on this car. Uh, wouldn't mind finding a nicer one of those, but it's not that big a deal right now. The rear suspension. All right, he put, just before he sold it to me, he put a super stock springs on it because the factory springs he'd been running were sagging and had started to, started to cut a slick when he would launch the car. It would squat. The super stock springs don't do that. They actually raise the body up. That's their purpose. But this one here on this side has, as you can see, the shackles hitting the uh, part of the frame. So something's gone wrong there in the wheel. The axle's not in the car true. It's kind of at a little bit of about three quarters of an inch forward on the other side of the car that way. So we got to take all that apart. I've already checked the center pins are in place. So I'm not sure what happened there. We've got to take all that apart. Measure the springs versus the factory springs. I do still have the factory springs. I may have them re-arched, but this car seemed to run okay with them. Uh, the back bumper, I think it's okay. I don't think we need to address it. Uh, there's a piece in the trunk I need to fix. And this right here, I need to get that off the parts car. I can just glue that one back on either way. And yes, yeah, that, that's supposed to have a Chrysler black and silver, I believe. I need to fix that. Uh, the steering wheel has an enormous amount of play in it. My neighbor, who's a 40 year mechanic, tells me there's three screws that simply just need to be tightened up and that fixes that. The seat belts are out of date, or they will be, December 2022. So come January, I got to have new seat belts in the car. I did do a little research. I think I said in an earlier video that I wasn't sure if I could put a racing seat in it. You can, I have seen cars at the track with my own eyes, stock eliminated cars that had racing seats in them and had a roll bar. Um, the one guy that didn't have a roll bar had a bar that came up from here and supported the back of his seat, which is really a good idea and then he had his seat belt the shoulder straps over the top because i've heard you're not really supposed to put the shoulder strap down low it could snap your neck or your back but at the base of your neck in an accident so he had a bar i think i saw two cars that had done that had a bar coming up welded to the floor or bolted whatever and then fixed up against hard against the seat maybe bolted against the seat and then his seat belts just looped through the through the holes in the seat there's a racing seat so we're looking at that this winter we may run it like this for now we're definitely gonna fix the steering wheel uh let's see going around the car i do believe that's it guys 
There's one of the uh, plates that you use for ballast. It's got quite a bit of ballast in it. Uh, boy, this, what's on this side is tore up bad. Look at it. So we gotta fix this. And if I come across some NOS weather stripping, or if you guys find some NOS weather stripping, let me know. I would love to get my hands on it if it ain't outrageously priced. I believe the Murata and the Cordoba of this same era, the J-Body cars, 80 through 83, are the same as far as uh, the weather stripping around the doors and glass. So uh, if you run across that stuff, NOS, drop me a line. Let me know. All right, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and put her on in the shop. Okay, folks, this is Bob. As you can see, the Imperial is in the shop. Uh, I kind of staggered it to one side so I could get out. There's enough room there. I can barely get out. So I got to clean out some of this stuff here. This is all, uh, a lot of this stuff is B-body parts. This, uh, some of the stuff is late B-body uh, that I've acquired over the years. I just held on to it since I had this car here, Furious. I don't know why. And then I got some Imperial stuff here, old, like 66 Imperial. And uh, there's a set of adjustable rock arms and that old iron adjustable rock arms in that box, probably got to sell them. I need to clean this little bit right through here out. And uh, I could probably pull the car up a couple more inches. Uh, over here, I got a stack of old steering. I, I kind of like the hoard steering wheels. I probably should try to sell them. They don't bring much money. And then, you know, I don't know. I've got to change directions now that I bought this car. I can no longer fix up these old cars. I don't think I have time, so. But uh, we got some work to do. I noticed the battery went dead on me. And uh, so I charged it, got it started again. And the uh, alternator's not putting out. I don't know. So I've got to find out what's happening, what's going on there. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I uh, went on and took his numbers and lettering off on the glass. I still need to get this stuff off the door. And uh, I'll probably just put a little dab of glue or something to hold that in. There's not going to be much room to walk through here for right now. This car is big. Oh, by the way, it sticks out. You can see. Uh, and then you go to the front. My, when I went on the internet, it said both of these cars were the exact same inch-wise. And I think the Imperial is going to be a little bigger, actually, because it's, which I've got the back bumper on the Furious tucked in a little bit to kind of clean the look up. You had know the 70s cars there, the bumper's sticking out so far with the big bumper guards, and that's a glass bumper, and I, I tucked it up in. I just like that look better. So you're probably looking at a couple inches there. Oh, boy. I don't know. Yeah, I need to clean this. It's just my scrap metal pile. It's come in handy over the years, just making little small pieces I needed for the race cars. I'm just gonna have to uh, probably surrender some of that stuff and get down to a more manageable pile and put it somewhere else. And that's where all my lug nuts and hose clamps and just different things are at. Can't tell you how many times I've gone to that to get something. This is something new. I just put this up. It's coming like a battery charging station. I had a lot more batteries at the bottom, car batteries at the bottom and uh cordless drills and cordless devices up here and i just plug the plug everything in right here and uh that, that was actually pretty handy but it's not gonna be room for it anymore i'm gonna have to probably do something different there and i got a cluster right here this is a little bit about when i was selling parts like crazy oh man i was getting buying stuff selling stuff like nuts so we ain't got much room here uh, here's that motor, 383 motor crank. Uh, the rods are over there, over there on that shelf. We're actually on the bottom, below the shelf. Here's the, the heads and intake, 915 heads and intake. I like to sell all this stuff. And I got it tight here. Um, I was going to keep this cart. Uh, to, I could just move it from one to the other, but it's too wide. I had a smaller cart and I sold it like a fool. It was perfect. And this cart's a big, heavy duty cart. I don't need anything like that. Uh, I need to start cleaning that cart off. There's all kinds of stuff on that cart that's worth some money to us, us car guys, <laughs> us Mopar car guys. It's all kinds of, I got wheel spacers, uh, feet for jacks, you name it. It's all up in there. Backing plates, <laughs> shifters. <laughs> uh, so I got to clean and get through, go through all that. Probably put it in a box, put it on that loft up there, I guess. 
what I don't want to sell. I had two workbenches. I had a small one here that I could pull up with a chair. It was in the way. That's it right there. I got it out the side. That's where it's going to stay. I just ain't going to have room for it anymore. I built this myself. I love this tall because I'm tall. This was really a nice workbench. And like so many things, it's, it's cluttered up. So I got to clean it off and make a decision exactly where I want to put that. I would like to keep it. I may slide it back further back this way. I got a workbench here that was ideal for sitting down. So I need to clean all this off. <laughs> so I think if I get this cleaned out through here and the workbench cleaned off, the cart cleaned off, I'll probably put it up for sale and buy a cheap Harbor Freight roller cart and then clean out over there my scrap metal pile. We'll have room for this, these two monsters. Uh, so we'll start, uh, after, I get, after I get some working room, we'll, uh, everybody's wanting to know, when are you gonna get it to the track? Well, I, I've run into, like I said, I got the charger problem. I've got a problem with the, for some reason, the tack works in erratically. It works and it don't work, and it works and it don't work. Same with the water temperature. And uh, if you'll notice, I wasn't going to put this in this video, but see this wheel there, how close it is inside? And you go to this side over here, and it's jacked way up. And everybody's saying, well, that's because you got super stock springs. Okay, well, super stock, super stock springs jack the car up the other way. The right hand side is high. So the left, the right hand side on this car, the spring has collapsed. I'm not sure why. There's nothing wrong with the spring, I don't think. The hanger has gone all the way up and bottomed out to the, the frame of the car at the back. So in other words, it's like it's compressed. Don't know what made it do that. So uh, we got to get it jacked up safely and uh, take all that stuff apart and just see what the heck happened there. I just don't know. I'm not the one that installed that stuff, so I just, just do not know. I do know all the bolts were loose. Maybe it sprung itself while the bolts were loose. I got the bolts tight now. I have to loosen them back up and drop these shock absorbers, let the axle dangle. But that's another thing. The axle's not in correctly either. It's it's forward. This side here is forward three quarters of an inch to that side. So it's dog walking as it goes. We got to fix all that before I can get to the track, guys. But the motor and everything seems strong. A little 318 motor. Uh, I've got a time slip. That was printed out on the computer. This car ran a 12 to 80 something down in Orlando, Florida in the fall and spring of a year ago. Two, I guess a year and a half ago. So uh, that's pretty impressive for a big old 40,000 pound, I guess 4,200 pounds with driver. So uh, we'll get it. We'll get to working on it. I don't know if it's going to go out this year or not. Uh, we'll try, guys. It's just going to depend on the weather. It's, it's uh, October the 8th, I think now. It's really just gonna depend on the weather. But we'll, uh, I still wanna work on Furious. Oh Lord, this car, I swear, I love this car to death. It's so cool, it fits me. But uh, anyway, so there you have it. Well, I may have found out why the alternator wasn't charging. Check this out. This nut right here is loose. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can get you in there. Yeah, and that was loose and it was allowing the cable to, and that could have something to do with why my tack, so they said the red wire was for the tack and that's a red wire. So that might be why the tack was working there irrelevantly and could have something the temperature gauge would work it irrelevantly. So, uh, hmm, could have something to do with it. So let's tighten that up. I'm not going to start the car back up tonight. I don't want to put any more heat into it. It's cooled off. But maybe the, tomorrow or something we'll, we'll start it. So I went on and took the nut completely off. And I think what I'm going to do, if you'll look at the back side here, I'm going to hit that with some Scotch Brite or sandpaper or something. The same with the terminal. And uh, since I got it off, let's get that good and clean. Okay, so I took some emery cloth and stuff right here and I cleaned up the uh, terminal. This piece here with the yellow on it. Or I should say the lug. And I cleaned the uh, 
bolt up, I mean the nut rather up, but that's the nut that's got a washer built into it and it's a spinning washer. So it's concave and it's hard to get inside and clean it good, but I've got the outer edges nice and shiny. So I decided to go ahead and put a lock washer on it as well, because it's possibly just vibrated loose. So I got a lock washer on it this that I cleaned up nice and shiny, uh, cleaned the bolt up, I mean the nut up nice and shiny, and the uh, the lug is clean, nice and shiny. And I made sure on these Chrysler alternators, if you tighten them too tight, it'll it'll turn this back bolt or nut, and that'll break it loose on the inside. You know, then you can never get the thing to tighten up again without taking it back apart, the alternator back apart. So you gotta be careful tightening them up. So I was, having done that through experience, I made sure I didn't do that. So I think we're good to go there. I think we solved that problem rather easily. I'll find out next time I start it up, but hopefully that fixes the uh, water temperature working erratically too. But I believe that's gonna get the tack in the battery back to charging. Gosh, I hope so. If that's the case, that was an easy fix. Guys, I want you to follow along with the car, enjoy the car with me. Uh, we're gonna have a little contest coming up soon. Uh, you'll enjoy that, I hope. <laughs> and uh, this will be a class car, meaning it's got, it's got a class that it particularly runs in. It's not a bracket car like Furious is a bracket car. This bracket rules are real. I mean, there's a couple of safety requirements and that's really about it. You can pretty much run whatever the heck you show up at the track with. This car, on the other hand, is different. It's a class car. It's got all, all kind of rules you got to adhere to, what type of fuel you run. That's just amazing the stuff they've got. So it's a lot. This will be a class car that will get out three or four times a year. And Furious, hopefully, will get out 10, 10, 12 times a year. Different, completely different. Sometimes they run both classes at the same track. I don't have a trailer big enough to haul both cars. And I don't really want to run two cars at the same event. I don't, I just never cared for that. Maybe when I was younger, I could have done it, but not now. So anyway, hang in there, guys. Uh, we're going to get these two cars going, and I uh, want you guys to enjoy it and follow along. If you're out at the track, come talk to me. And uh, would love to have some, uh, you guys enjoy it as much as I do. It's all about having fun. If it won't have fun, I wouldn't be doing it. I have spent a fortune <laughs> on these cars and some other cars. Small fortune. All right, folks, take care. That's the end of the video.